video i'll try to actually understand the glycolysis process but before that just a few recaps on what is glycolysis it's basically a process from glucose break it down lysis into pyruvate so that we can actually produce atps so how is this possible is when we eat a carb it will further break down into glucose and glucose will further convert into pyruvate and pyruvate will go become acetyl coa and goes into the krebs cycle so in krebs cycle it will produce more energy by giving the protons to the electron transport chain and in conclusions one glucose molecule will produce around 30 to 32 nets of ATPs and of course um, the pathway might have a different pathway from the main glycolysis pathway but this video intend to explain further on this before that since we talk about carb the usual uh, questions that they will ask is about the monosaccharide sorry monosaccharide disaccharide and polysaccharide so let's talk about the monosaccharide first so monosaccharide for example we have here is glucose other than glucose we have another monosaccharide which call fructose and also we have another monosaccharide which we call galactose now since the glucose fructose and galactose can actually combine themselves with the glycosidic um, bond alpha glycosidic bond we, we can have a disaccharide structure and disaccharide structure includes glucose plus glucose which will become maltose glucose plus fructose which will become the sucrose and also glucose plus galactose which will become the lactose how to remember this you have to work your own way you have to just remember whichever you can and of course we have the third one so with the glycosidic bone forming disaccharide here and then we have a polysaccharide polysaccharide hence its name poly so multiple uh, structure of glucose combined together can become glycogen or starch and also cellulose in plants Okay, so let's talk about this glycolysis. As you know, it's include 10 steps here. And you would like to know how many the net of the ATP is produced in only the glycolysis here. So we are talking about this process from glucose into pyruvate only. So I'll divide this uh, 10 steps into 1 and 2 phase. So we have phase one. Phase one basically a phase where we use energy. It's an investment. We have to use the energy for the first five uh, steps. And phase two is the energy gaining steps plus energy. So you use a little energy, but you produce more energy, just like a cash, cash flow in investment. So let's begin with the phase one. So the, f the first five steps, so from glucose, as you know, glucose is six um, carbon chains. So we have C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, and also we have C6 here. Okay, so glucose will be converted into glucose 6-phosphate by using an enzyme that's called hexokinase. 
Another favorite question is about hexokinase and also glucokinase. Glucokinase. Okay. So the hexokinase is usually present in all tissue except liver. In liver, we have a special uh, enzyme that convert glucose into glucose 6-phosphate, uh, which named glucokinase, and it's actually uh, modulated by the or the the stimulation or inhibitions by the insulin, while the hexokinase is the byproduct of the G6P itself. That's the main difference. So basically, just remember hexokinase all tissue, glucokinase all, only in liver. After the glucose become uh, glucose 6-phosphate, basically it just, as you can see, phosphate here. There's no phosphate group in the glucose. So that means this process requiring energy. So from ATP plus glucose with the help of hexokinase, it will become G, uh, G glucose 6-phosphate. So that means they add the um, phosphate group in the sixth carbon. So we have phosphate here. So this is the first energy used here. After that, glucose 6-phosphate will become fructose 6-phosphate, which basically will uh, use an enzyme called phospho glucose isomerase i don't think we have to talk uh, further down to what the difference between glucose and fructose but the the main difference that i can say actually the first carbon chain in uh, glucose 6-phosphate it's a double bond of the oxygen here while the fructose at the c1 is actually hydroxy group okay and after that the fructose 6-phosphate will further convert into where's my pen? Um, fructose 1,6-phosphate, biphosphate, sorry, biphosphate. So that means in here, it add more um, phosphate group in, in the structure so we need another ATP here so another ATP is used in total of two ATP use so become ADP thus we can have the another phosphate group in the structure so in here we only have phosphate group here but after this this is C6, and now we have at the C1, phosphate group in the um, C1. So after fructose 1,6 biphosphate, uh, it will convert it by the enzyme called uh, fructose. Also, fructokinase. Further down here, it will become a unique structure. This is a six carbon structure, and using this enzyme, it will divide it in itself into how do I show one, two, three, four, five, six. So it will divide itself, becoming dihydroxyacetate acetone phosphate so imagine they actually divide itself so each of them will have the phosphate group here so one become dihydroxyacetate phosphate acetone phosphate sorry another one will become the famous Glyceraldehyde three phosphate because this is the carbon tree in the new structure. Okay, so as you can see from 
six carbon, it will become a three carbon structure. Three carbon structure. And they can interchange themselves by using the enzyme triose isomerase. Triose isomerase. And uh, fructose 1 6 biphosphate converted into this two structure using fructose biphosphate aldose. Okay, so the highlights that I want to show here is that whenever the uh, the process in involves ATPs, you can see the name of the enzyme is kinase. And when it just change the positions, we call it isomerase. Just like this, isomerase. Phosphoglucose isomerase. Okay, so in this phase one, we are using two energy, two ATPs. So minus two ATP. After this, the structure that I'm going to describe later here will be times two because the dihydroxyacetone phosphate can be converted into glyceraldehyde phosphate and from glycer glyceraldehyde three phosphate uh, it will convert it further down into one three by phospho glycerate as you can see when here it's only contain one uh, phosphate at the carbon tree now it's contained two phosphates so what uh, involved in here so here we have NAD and it will convert it into NADH NADH is the proton that will be used in the ETC electron transport chain. Okay, so what enzyme actually uh, contribute to this? It's a glu glycerol aldehyde three phosphate dehydrogenase. Okay, further down. One three by phosphoglycerate will be um, converted into three phosphoglycerate. So now it's losing the phosphate group. So here is also the energy producing step. From ADP, it gets the phosphate group from the one three by phosphoglycerate and forming ATP. Now we have energy producing steps here. So ATP will be produced. And what enzyme actually responsible for this is, remember ATP, involvement of the ATP will become kinase. So phosphoglycerate glycerate kinase. Is the enzyme responsible for this? And then after uh, three phosphoglycerates become two phosphoglycerate. Two phosphoglycerate. Basically, they're using an enzyme called mutase. What mutase? The phosphoglycerate that is mutase. And then from uh, two phosphoglycerate, it will further convert by the anolase and producing H2O and forming PEP. So what is PEP? It's a phosphoenol pyruvate. So as a name, it uses anolase phosphoenol pyruvate and PEP. This is very significant 
because it's uh, this substrate actually involved in the uh, gluconeogenesis pathway. And finally, we have our pyruvate here. And it's the last... Um, because pyruvate basically is a structure that looks like this. It does not contain any phosphate group. So we have Hasher. Okay, so this is pyruvate basically. So this steps also producing ATP. So ADP plus phosphoenyl pyruvate, it's become ATP. So because it's involving ATP, so we have the enzyme called pyruvate kinase. So as you can see here, all of this times 2 because of the structure that we're producing here. All of this is a 3 carbon structure while in here the dihydroxyacetone phosphate will actually convert it into glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate and goes down. So as you can see here, in single structure, it's going to produce an ADH, 1 and ADH, and 2 ATP in the phase 2. So this times 2, so equal to 2 and ADH and 4 ATP. But we have to minus the rate uh, the energy consuming in the phase one so minus two atp so the net for the glycolysis from glucose into pyruvate is two and adh and two atp and adh times three so it's become six atp <laughs>